Hey Explorers, welcome back to another episode of Virtual Mosey. My name's Catherine and today's experiment is going to be all about honeybees and pollination. Now believe it or not, there are more than 20,000 species of bees out there. Honeybees, or Apis mellifera, are only one of those many, many species. And believe it or not, originally they came from Europe, but now we rely on them for a lot of important processes in keeping our plants alive and healthy and growing. So I figured since our lesson was about bees, let's go outside to our flower garden and see if we can find a few bees ourselves. In fact, I saw some over here by this blue bush earlier. So I'm gonna see if I can find a bee for you guys. And I'm gonna be very careful and quiet. So hopefully we don't scare any off. I think I see one. Now don't try this at home friends, but I am going to try to catch this bee so that I can show it to you. So I'm gonna be very careful so that I don't get stung. Ah, I got it. Ta-da! And here you go, we have a beautiful worker bee here. Worker bees are all female in the, in the hive. You can see that it has one, two, three, four, five, six legs, just like all bugs, three pairs of legs to make six in total. And honeybees have two sets of wings, so four wings total. And this worker bee here is the one that does all the work in the hive. It's the one that flies out and finds food. It's the one that takes care of the babies. It's the one that is the warriors that defend the hive. It really does every job imaginable. So they are very, very hard workers. They're a little bit tiny, and they spend all day going from flower to flower to flower. And of course, as you might know, they have a little stinger right here that we want to avoid at all costs. And they don't want to sting you either, because if a honeybee stings a person, that's it. Their stinger comes out and they actually die. So bees do not want to sting you if they don't have to. And that's honeybees in particular. Other species of bees might be different. Let's let this little worker bee um, come with us as we see if we can find the other two members of the hive. Let's see. Oh, I see another one. Okay. I'm gonna be very, very careful. I'm gonna put you down. Ah, all right. We have caught our second honeybee. And now you might notice a few differences between the worker bee that we found before and this one. The differences are small, but this one is actually a drone bee. They're not usually found outside of the hive, so I don't know what this little guy's doing out here. But just like our regular worker bee, two sets of wings, how many legs? Six legs, just like all bugs. Do you notice any other differences between them though? Maybe in their eyes or their little, little bee butts? Yeah, these drone bees do not have a stinger. Drones are males and they do not sting. They spend their whole life safe inside the hive and uh, they've got these nice big eyes so that they can find the queen because that is their favorite person. And their one job is to help make little baby bees. So they, uh, yeah, they don't gather honey. They don't defend the hive. They just hang out inside all day. A little bit lazy. All right. Let's let these two bees take a rest. And we're gonna see if we can find the most important honeybee of all. Do you know what that might be? She's the only one in the hive. She's unique. She's special. She's royalty. She is the honeybee queen. As evidenced by her crown, which all bees def all, all honeybee queens definitely wear in the wild. So you can see that she has some things in common with the other bees, right? She's got the two sets of wings. They're a little bit smaller because she doesn't have to fly a lot. And we've got still one, two, three, four, five, six legs. And let's see if we can notice some other differences between her and let's say a worker bee. Do you notice any differences? Maybe in terms of size? Yeah, the queen of the hive is actually a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter, a little bit longer than your regular worker bee. She does have a stinger as well. 
she can sting multiple times. So when a honeybee queen stings, she can keep going. But they don't usually use these stingers on people. Remember, the honeybee queen usually lives inside the hive most of her life. The reason she has a stinger is in case she needs to fight or do battle with another honeybee queen. So that's why she's able to sting multiple times. And in fact, even though she's a little bit bigger, she does look a lot like a regular worker bee. So many hives where beekeepers help kind of monitor things will actually put a little dab of paint on her back and it doesn't hurt them, but it lets the beekeeper know which one is the queen so he can take extra special care or the beekeeper can make sure that um, they get all the food they need, that they're safe and healthy. All right. So let's talk a little bit about what bees do. Bees are very, very important, if you watched our plant video, for pollination. Pollen, remember, is one of the genetic material inside of a flowering plant. And in order for a plant to produce seeds, it needs to get the pollen from one flower to the flower of another plant. And bees and other pollinators help this process. So I have this cute little bee here. Whoop. Hopefully it doesn't get too blurry. And we're gonna see how this works. So the bee wants the pollen so that it can make what? Do you guys know? It's really, really sweet. Yeah, bees like to make honey, right? And bees eat honey throughout the winter. So bees need to gather that pollen and nectar from the flowers. So it's gonna go to one of the flowers. It's gonna gather as much pollen as it can. Mom, 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 mom. So delicious, so delicious. I love honey. I'm gonna make a lot of honey with this pollen. Awesome. Now it's used up a lot of the pollen inside this flower. So it's gonna go see if it can find pollen in another flower. And I have, I noticed that there's another flower in this tree here. And so does our bee. It's gonna go in. It's going to look for more pollen. Yum, 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 yum. Delicious. And what do you notice? There was no pollen in this flower to begin with, but now there's quite a bit. Because our bee took the pollen from one flower and left a little bit behind. So it's a good trade-off for the plant, right? It takes a little bit of that. Um, it, it makes pollen. It gives nectar for this energy source for the bee. And in return for the food, the flower gets to make little baby seeds. This is called a symbiotic relationship, where two different species are working in a close, long-term relationship. Can you think of any other symbiotic relationships? There's many different kinds. In this case, the flower is benefiting and the bee is benefiting. So we call that a mutualistic relationship. Thumbs up on both sides but maybe it's just benefiting one species, like a tiny little fish called a pilot fish on a shark. The pilot fish gets to eat all the little gunk left over from the shark, and the shark doesn't really, it's not really helped, it's not really hurt. We call that commensalism. And of course, there's the relationship where one species benefits and the other does not. I'll bet you can think of a common relationship like this when you are out on a summer's night because mosquitoes and humans have this type of relationship where the mosquito is benefiting and the human gets a nasty itch at best or a disease at worst and this is called parasitism so two types of symbiotic relationships now to get back to our bees here i took pollen from one flower of this plant and brought it to the flower of a of the same plant a different flower in the same plant this is called um, self-pollinization, where the plant is mixing its genes, but it's still mixing them with itself, so it's not the best case scenario. Can you think of a better case scenario? See if we can find another flower out here. Hmm, there's one. Okay, so if the bee takes pollen from one plant and brings it to the flower of another plant, looking for more pollen, of course, and we can see some is left behind. This is a good example of cross-pollination, where two different plants are mixing their pollens together. And that creates a better genetic diversity for the plant. So its offspring are gonna be much healthier, which we want, right? 
And bees actually help pollinate so many of our agricultural crops, especially fruit. So if you like eating apples or pears or cantaloupes, bees help with that kind of pollinization. But how does the pollen stick to the bees in the first place? Well, on our models, you saw those long legs at the bottom, right? Bees have big, long hairs on the bottom of their feet that attract pollen using static electricity. Do you know what static electricity is? If you've ever rubbed a balloon on your head, and I'm gonna do it now, so don't mind the crazy hair, you're generating static electricity because the balloon and the hair are exchanging electrons, making one positive and one negative. The bee's hair is naturally static, just like this, especially when it's flying around. And I've got a little flower here with some little paper punches to represent pollen. So let's see if our honeybee can pick up any of this pollen here on our paper. And you can definitely try this activity at home if you're curious. It's really easy to do. So I hope that's enough static. I've made my hair thoroughly messy. Let's see what happens as it gets closer. Oh, it is so humid out here, it's giving me some trouble. Let me try again, really go for it. Oh. Okay, a couple. So you can see I have a few little pollen pieces that stuck to the bottom of my bee, and that's actually due to static electricity. So if you get a nice dry day to try this experiment, most of these paper things are gonna get all up on your bee. Or if you don't wanna mess up your hair, definitely try the carpet. That'll do the same thing. Okay. So how do bees find flowers in the first place, you might be asking? Well, honeybees work together to do this. In fact, 75% of bee species are solitary. They live alone or in small groups. Honeybees are special because they like to be with their friends, their family, they like to be social. And that gives them quite the advantage when it comes to finding honey. Because bees actually have a secret language. Have you heard of it before? How do bees communicate? That was the question from our last video. Believe it or not, bees communicate through dancing. Bees do something called the waggle dance to tell their other worker bees where they're going, uh, where the pollen is located. So, um, let me show you over here really quickly. First of all, a bee is gonna find a flower and then the bee is going to go back to the hive, tell all of its sisters, because remember, worker bees are all female, where the honey is located, or the pollen, excuse me, is located. And they do this, like I said, through dancing. So we have a honeycomb here, just like so. So the first thing the bee is gonna do when it gets back is it's gonna start vibrating. It's gonna start going as crazy as it possibly can to get all the bees' attention. It might even jump on top of the other bees, stand on them, dance around. Once enough bees are listening, the bee that is sending the message is gonna go to the honeycomb. The very top of the honeycomb is gonna represent where the sun is in the sky. And so the bee is telling the other bees, okay, if you go outside, look towards the sun, and then the honey is gonna be at this angle, or this angle, and it tells the other bees what direction they need to go. So if the honey is in that direction, they're gonna start at the bottom, and they're gonna dance and vibrate their way along here. If maybe that's the sun and they need to go that way, they're gonna go the opposite direction, dancing on this way. Now, the bees know which direction they need to travel, but the bee that is communicating gives them one more important piece of information. Do you know what that might be? If you were looking for something and you said, where is it? And I said, oh, just go right. What else do you need to know? You need to know how far you need to go, right? Same with the bees. So the bees go as far as the distance they need to travel. So, for example, if it's very far away, they might dance the entire honeycomb. But if it's kind of closer, they might just dance part of it. Say, oh, it's not far at all. Just go this way. 
Do you think you can try the waggle dance at home? That's really what it's called. If you draw a hexagon, you can cut along your honeycomb and dance as crazy as you want. And the crazier you dance, the more pollen you're telling the other bees that there is. So if I kind of this way, they know there's not a lot of pollen because I'm not excited about it. But if there's a lot of pollen, you gotta give it a lot of energy. You gotta look really silly, really crazy, just like me. Um, I hope that you guys are able to try this out at home. And I wanted to leave you with one question for our next video. You might have heard that bees defy the laws of physics because they've got these fat, fuzzy, round bodies and these little tiny wings, especially bumblebees. So do you think they defy the laws of physics? Is that true or false? Reality or a myth? Tune into our next video to find out. I hope you guys learned a little bit about bees. I hope they made you excited. And as always, keep discovering.